Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode, which is all about NFTs. But before we get onto that, we just want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporters because, you know, that really helps us to keep this podcast going. And we're going to thank all of you personally at the end of the show. Yeah, we really appreciate the support because not only does it help us towards the cost of running Kicking the Creatives, and that helps us keep doing what we do, but it also shows that you like what we're doing. So a big thank you to you. And we also want to thank everyone who's been sharing their work for the challenges with us on social media. And um, I've been loving Heather Lynn Baskin. Have you been seeing what she's been doing for the five minute March challenge? She's done some lovely drawings. It's really amazing what she achieves in such a short time. So what she does, she kind of combines these really kind of loose lines with this hint of muted colour, and they're really lovely. And I don't know how she's done it, but it almost looks like they're kind of on a on a canvas, on a perhaps a toned canvas. She's been doing things like deers and I don't know all sort of animals. Oh, I may have seen them. Yeah, Yeah, I'm sure you would. Yeah, you would have definitely seen them. But they they are really lovely. I've been enjoying those. Who else? Julie Turner. She's been doing the Quick Kick March. And I've been loving what she's been doing because Quick Kick March um, was all about uh, taking a photo from nature. And what she's been doing is taking it. I presume she's taken the photo herself. I don't know. But she's been using uh, a photo from nature. I think she's been taking herself. And then what she's been doing is she's actually been drawing from that photo in her sketchbook but she's been sharing the time lapse video of her actually doing it you must have seen those yeah that's a five minute march she's been doing hasn't she i think with those oh oh is that what it is i thought it was I think the... so oh okay i thought but it was a quick wrong. kick no i think it's the well, quick, no, the quick i think she's been combining it so i thought oh, she's been doing oh, quick I quick and doing the nature photo and then doing a five minute drawing of it it's amazing, isn't it, how many people do combine different challenges? Yeah, it's quite clever, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Anyway, what about you? What's caught your eye? Well, I've really liked Imaginings by Karen's, that's uh, her Instagram name, her photos of scenery. Because she lives in Canada and it's just beautiful yeah. pictures of mountains and water and trees. So they've been absolutely lovely. Mm. Um, now, we'd lo- I'd love to live in scenery like that, but it's too cold for me much it, much it, too it's Canada, cold Canada's got definite seasons though hasn't it so it's really cold in the winter but it's really warm in the summer I think well, I, th- I think where she is I think it's uh, and she'll no doubt correct us in the group <laughs> but I think it's very very cold in the winter I don't know how warm in the summer but very cold mm, I know because yeah. she's she takes lots of snowy scenes yeah photos, doesn't she yeah yeah, yeah I, I don't think I'd be good with that either and then we've also had some really fantastic Facetastic Fridays. Oh, how uh, we a, just? Oh, a couple I've really liked this week were by I'm going to say this wrong. Sae, that's spelled C Y E E Art Doodles, and Sam Massey, and they'd both done the. There's like a professor guy in a what do you call them? The mortar like hats. Flat things, those flat hats. Yeah, things. the flat hats. So they've both done that and they both done, I really like the interpretation they've both done of that. So yeah, they, they were some of my favourites, but there's been some great ones of those Face Fantastic Fridays. I'm oh, always brilliant. amazed. Brilliant. You yeah. can tell I didn't go to university, can't you? Because I don't know what those flat cap things Mortarboard. are. Mortarboard. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, I was thinking I think of that so. comedian. Oh, gosh. What, the comedian that used to wear oh, one. yes. I Tommy Cooper. Was it yeah. Tommy Cooper? Yes, Tommy Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I carry on. on once. <laughs> yeah. Funny old things. They mess up your hair. You've worn one. Did you get a degree? Well, I got an HND, but you still wore one for that. Oh. So, yeah. There we go. I, I got a dunce's hat. <laughs> <laughs> you should wear it more often <laughs> anyway what is new with you what is new with me um well I'm still thinking about what my next painting will be because I finished my coat my crush coat can painting um I haven't actually decided yet I don't want to rush um to think of something because usually 
when they come to me naturally, I then really can't wait to do it. I don't want to force something. And I'm using this sort of time just to catch up with other things, recharge a bit until it comes to me. But I also, I want to, I don't know, I want to do something a little bit different. So the same style, obviously, as I always do, and same sort of similar subjects and everything like that. But I kind of want some kind of surprise element in it. So I, I think I'm, maybe I'm evolving. What do you think? Oh, maybe. I mm. still want to see a face in something. And I know you mentioned you might do sometime. Yeah. I, I, in, in very much within the subjects I usually In a bottle or something. Or yeah, like, yeah. That's, I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, or anyway, I've got some other ideas, but I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to okay. wait. Um, have you not got stuff up on your board? You know, yes, you've got that white board. I have, you have. Yes, I've got a few things up there that I'm sort of... But, you know, I have things on there. I mean, I had crushed Coke can on that board for months. And I never did it until then I sort of was looking through my stuff. and thought, Oh, my gosh, I really want to... Um, I really want to do that. But funny enough, the crushed Coke can I had in my head when I put that on the board was very different. I was going to do one sort of normal one, one um crushed and they were going to be the classic red coke cans and but it's funny you know you just when you put something on a board you have this vision in mind but by the time I come to do it sometimes it's very different so everything evolves doesn't it it depends what mood I'm in at the time as to how I paint something anyway um also I took about I don't know four or five paintings um that I'd previously done to the photographer's um, last week to be photographed so that I've got the the you know the the really really high res image um, so that when anyone wants a print I can have these beautiful chiclet prints made which is great and I got those back a couple of days ago put um, them up uh, literally the day before yesterday and um, got a message last night someone wants to buy number one edition of the wine by the fire one too many excellent that so that was great so it was lovely to know that someone's bought one of those um yeah so but meanwhile yeah i'm just actually i need to do some draw i just fancy doing a bit more a bit of drawing i haven't actually drawn for a little while and i start really missing that funny enough i i always miss painting but when i don't draw as well for ages i feel that i really miss that yeah, I really. And I'll tell you what I, I watched the other day. Have you watched that program? Um, what do artists do all day? No. Yeah, it's on. I wish I could remember what side it's on. Uh, oh, I think it might it be later. on Sky. It's probably on Sky Arts, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what do artists do all day? And I've watched about three of those in the past. They're just ones I I kind of come across every now and then, and. Um, there are the ones where you think, oh my gosh, this is the typical um, cliche of what you'd imagine an artist to be. Oh, yeah. artsy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, and, and normally I'm like, oh God, and it, it's a bit eye rolling really. You're like, oh. Yeah. But anyway, this this one I, I happened to come across uh, yesterday and it was um, Shelley Hughes. Now Shelley Hughes, she's an, she writes the Alfie books and um she's an illust- she illustrates her books as well and she's i think she was 85 or 86 at the time of um filming that documentary i was i just loved it i sat there and i i just loved every second of this um of watching her drawing her characters and and what she does all day and i just i just really really loved watching it and she had this book she was looking through this book can't remember what it was called now and she was, sort of, and it was a really old book, out of print now. And she, she said, oh, you know, I love this book, and this used to inspire me. And of course, I was pausing on this book, thinking, oh, I wonder if I can get hold of one of those. It looks amazing. <laughs> anyway, I managed to get hold of one on eBay. All so, right, but it's coming from America. So, um, oh, kids, is it kids' illustration? No, this is all. This is all. Um, this this particular book was on American cartoonists. And uh, you know examples of their cartoons and things. All oh, right. Really, I just really would love to yeah. have that. So apparently, it's going to take about um, six weeks to arrive. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> but anyway, so I was really chuffed. I got that, but I really, really loved watching that. I thought, yes, she's just a lovely woman. She's unfortunately she's passed away now, but um, her daughter now does. Uh, she does illustration and she illustrates her own books as well. So, so what was that program called again? 
Um, it's called What Do Artists Do All Day? All right. Uh, and I say, I've, I've seen a few, <clears throat> and some of them are just very, um, I don't know, you just think, really, do you do that? Or is that really what you do? Or is that for TV, maybe? <laughs> is that for, yeah. Or is it, are you trying to... I think some of it's PR, isn't it? It's like a, uh, yeah. a stunty type, They're always in a fog of smoke, sitting there with a... I don't know, it just... I don't know. It just... Sometimes I think, really? But anyway, yeah. no, this was refreshing. <laughs> kind of remind me a bit... Because I, I used to paint with Rosa Branson, obviously, before the COVID pandemic and all the rest of it uh, from time to time. And she's she's in her 80s and she was... Fan- well, she's a fantastic lady. She really is. And, you know, this lady just reminded me of her a bit. So, yeah, it's really good. Anyway, good. Yeah. what about you? What is new with you? Well, it's really appropriate, actually, for this episode. Because I've been very concentrating unusual on... for you to be appropriate. <laughs> Tara, what's wrong with I... you? Oh, sorry. I've been <laughs> concentrating on NFTs again. Uh, and I've sold a few more. I did a collaboration with other artists called Anna Zubarev. I hope I've pronounced that right. And... What what a lot of well not a lot of artists but quite a few artists with NFTs they do collaborations and of mm. course that what that does is create something you know completely different also it brings the two audiences together of the two artists so Anna does these I don't know how you describe them quite decorative pieces with flowers and swirls a lot of them are black ink aren't they you've seen her stuff yeah you? I yeah. have yeah and she uh, I saw she, one she did with someone else actually popped up on Twitter yesterday and I was like oh and I recognized it straight away yeah so I basically did a sort of character thing in the middle and then she did that around the outside I didn't talk about this last time did I no you didn't no No, good (laughs) so I don't want to bore everybody but yes so I did the middle bit and she did that and it was amazing because she put it up and I think it sold within literally seconds of her putting it up uh, tweeting it yeah, basically. yeah. Like, oh my god that's incredible mm. so yeah and then I've I've just been co- totally concentrating on that really I've been making some more art and I've I think I minted well that's basically <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry with the terminology already I've put up a few more NFTs and I've sold those I sold a couple more which is really good because I was having a bit of a dry spell so uh well, yeah that's, that's this part of the ebb and flow of being an artist isn't it yeah oh and I've also st- started this new thing that I was telling you about Sandra and I where I'm trying to get together 30 artists to do a project which I can't talk too much about at the moment no you did invite me didn't you to be part of it and I was (laughs) like yes I'll do it and then you said you've got to paint really quickly I was like oh actually (laughs) no that's why I was really (laughs) shocked when you said yes I was thinking I thought I thought the answer would be an immediate no and you said yes I'm thinking how is she going to do this <laughs> well to be fair I was in Tesco trying to decide between a million different brands of toilet roll at the time so oh. I was a bit distracted as well <laughs> important, important decisions sorry yeah. yeah anyway so yeah I'm trying to organize that as well and I'll talk more about that you know when it happens yeah but it's quite a scary thing to organize things mm. with that many people so I hope it all comes off yeah well, we should get onto the subject of NFTs, should. then, shouldn't yeah. we? Because everyone, well, not everyone, but I reckon what percentage of the people listening will be thinking, what is an NFT? Um, I still ask you that question now, even though I do them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so uh, this is a thing. I do, first of all, want to stress to anyone who's listening to this that neither Tara or I are experts on this but I think sometimes it's actually better to get guidance from someone who's who's um perhaps not not a beginner obviously but not yet an expert because you're more likely to going to get the information you need in in simple um terms without being blown away by a whole new language which comes with nfts um now tara you've been doing it for a lot longer than i have and tara has actually sold lots of nfts so she's not lots yes 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 you have well, compared to me then. <laughs> so, so Tara's got a lot more of an understanding of how it works than I have. I only started doing it very recently. Um, and after the first week of doing it, then we had that Storm Eunice. where We had no, I couldn't do it for a week. So I'm kind of fairly behind. Um, but I am getting a bit of a better understanding of it as I go. And believe me, if I can understand it, well anybody can so so honestly don't don't be too frightened of it because I was I was thinking I'm never going to be able to do this 
Um, but anyway, let's let's share what we've learned so far along the way. And Tari, I'm, you know, you're going to take the lead with this because obviously you know a lot more than I do. And okay. this is a question obviously I've asked you and I continue to ask you. Uh, <clears throat> what is an NFT in simple um, in simple terms, please? Okay, well, what it actually stands for, which is of completely no use to anybody, I don't think, is non-fungible token. Because yeah. that, that means, doesn't explain anything, does it? Nothing. <laughs> no. So how I describe it, and no doubt the experts will say that's not right, but this is how I think of it. I think of an NFT as a digital thing, for example, a piece of digital art in our case, which mm. has proof of ownership behind it. Can so, I just stop you there? Yeah, you can. Because you've said a piece of digital art. Now, a lot of people might think that you mean a piece of art that's been created digitally, like on Procreate. That's not what you mean. What you mean is, a, say, I could take a um, have a, a lovely photograph taken of my art, yep. a, an, a, an oil painting, and you're talking about the digital Uh, image of of that yes yes so it could be a digital artist who creates digitally they could you know if someone used an ipad to create their art that could be made into an nft as a jpeg yeah or yes you could take a photograph of your painting and that becomes an nft yeah i mean to take it further you can also animate them so you can make it into a video but that's taking it a bit further yeah and, and actually you know for anyone listening i was absolutely blown away by all of this and now i have just put up my very first animated piece and it's basically one of my paintings which i have used a program to slightly animate it and i'm i'm actually doing another one as we speak i'm we're not while well, i'm recording this obviously but i'm working <laughs> on another animated piece um so again you know you can do interesting things with the art for an nft which you can't obviously do if you're selling just the hard you know the the piece of art the real piece of art if you if you like yeah and i think that's one of the quite interesting things about it because you're you are not an expert in animation are you no. you're using an app to do the animating yep i am yep anyway just to go back to this nft thing what it is i, I want to think of it like so we're basically saying we'll take it down to the simplest of, of it being a jpeg we'll say it's a jpeg for now mm. so and then you can prove that you own that jpeg yeah by by this by all this computerized stuff there's my technical term uh-huh. uh, but but it's almost like if if you bought an original piece of art you might get a certificate of authenticity with it some artists do don't they so they've signed it to say that is definitely an original by them yes so that is almost what you're getting when you buy an NFT, in my opinion. So, so what I, I mean, I found really hard to get my head around at first when, when all this has been explained to me, is why? Why would someone buy an NFT? Why would anyone want to own a piece of digital art when they could just download a JPEG on the internet? I mean, I, I still, even now, find that slightly puzzling. Well, there's, there's different types of NFTs that we're seeing mainly in the art world. And that is, you get these massive projects that are, tend to be about characters. Like if you think of a Pokemon or something like that, yeah. and there'll be loads of different variations of it. So you'll get NFT projects that are like that, and every one of the characters will be slightly different, and there might be thousands of them. And people collect them almost like they'd collect, do you remember trading cards? Are they called trading cards? Yes. Like baseball cards and stuff yeah. like that. And it's almost like the digital version of that. Right. And some of those physical trading cards end up becoming worth a fortune don't they because they're rare yeah yeah and because they catch on well the idea behind those sort of projects are that people hope that one day they'll be worth a lot and the ones they hold will go up in value so So they're kind of like an investment in a way collectible it's like collecting like people collect weird things people Mm. collect these nfts but then the way we're looking at it more is more about smaller quantities of art so uh, artists like like us maybe would probably create either one-on-one art which is basically we'll have we'll say here's a jpeg i'm only making one of these jpegs available as an nft and we're selling yeah. it as a one-off yeah or some people do so you do small editions like like you when you're doing print editions or something yeah. so we might say okay i'm gonna make 10 of these nfts available and then obviously the price would go down because you've got more of them 
Yeah, I mean, when I do my prints, I literally do 25 editions and I only do that because I know I see prints and they're like one one of 125 or something like that. And I think the less editions you have, the more special they become. Yeah, but it, it just depends. So some artists might be selling, I'm doing a, a bigger edition of this and I'll yeah. sell it below lower value. But mm-hmm. I can only really talk from the one and one, which means I'm doing one JPEG of mine because that's yeah. all I've done so far. So that's yeah. my experience and that's what you've been doing as yes. well, isn't it? Yes. Um, but the reason you do it instead of downloading a JPEG is that you've got proof that you own that thing. So just like if you owned a physical original painting and you could prove that that was yours, yeah, you can sell that thing. You can keep that thing. So it's it's a bit of like, what's the word? Like you know how so you sell show someone a picture. Oh, I've got an original so and so on my wall. Yeah, it's a bit like that. You might show someone on your phone. I've got an original so and so on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But seriously, yeah. And there are now galleries. The physical galleries. There's one in. Um, my mum sent me this article in London somewhere. There's a physical, you know, walk-in gallery that's full of NFTs. So I, oh. I'd imagine they've got big screens or something in there and they show yeah. NFTs but, on the screens. But if you buy an NFT, you it does not entitle you to then go printing them out and selling them as prints, does it? No, you don't own the copyright unless, of course, you agree that with the artist. Yeah. Would that, it's just the same as if you bought an original painting from an artist. Yeah. So, so that if someone buys your original painting, they're then not entitled to go take it down the photographers, get a proper photo done and print no. it and sell it. No. So that is, I think that's just the same as that, really. Mm, mm. Um, so once you own an NFT, or it, it can be bought and sold. So just because someone's bought your painting doesn't mean they're going to keep that all the time. They could sell that on. Yeah. Um, and then some artists give perks with their NFTs. Oh. <laughs> not, no, not, not dirty perks. Well, some might, for all I know. <laughs> there might be some it's amazing what NFTs. you come across on the internet these days. I, I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's an NFT massage parlor somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. in, the, in the case of most one on one artists, they'll either literally just sell the NFT or they might. They might sell an, an animated word version and a still version, or they might give, say, oh, this NFT also includes the physical piece. So basically, if you bought that NFT, they'd then post you the real work. Right. The painting. I mean, that would be expensive, wouldn't it, surely? Yeah, but obviously then you'd build that into your price. I see, yeah, yeah. So instead of, you know, if you were normally going to sell that NFT for $100, you might charge her $500 because you've got the painting with it. Yeah that makes sense yeah yeah. so yeah there's lots of different things you can do like that or you could put a print with it or even um you could just give someone a voucher with it so the nft comes with a voucher for 25 percent off a piece of art if you want it oh that's a cool idea yeah yeah so there's lots of things to do okay so i remember tara when i thought i'd sold one the other day oh yes yeah, and I immediately went into this kind of panic mode because although I knew how to put one up for sale that at that point, I had never once um, thought about what happens once you actually sell it. <laughs> I was thinking, well, okay, what do I do then? You know, if I do sell this thing, I mean, we'll go into this sale in a bit. Um, you know, how do I actually hand it over? I thought, well, do, am I supposed to send them a, a kind of um, USB with it on? I, what I just did not know, and I was I was bombarding with text. Help! I've, I think I've sold one. <laughs> so, so what does it mean for an artist when they sell an art NFT? And you know, what what do you what do you have to do? You don't have to do anything. Yeah, and, and I get all that <laughs> panic, and that's the answer. I've got. Don't do anything. No, <laughs> basically, if if you've just sold your NFT as an NFT, as in there's no bonus things, you're not sending them a print, you're not sending them an original, you're just selling the NFT, then the website that you've uploaded your image to, that's it. They get it via the website. That it Basically, the transfer of it just goes to them. Yeah. Just, a, just a word on the image. Yes. Because another thing I remember being quite confused about is what size image you put up. Because, you see, when my photographer takes photographs of my art, he does three versions. He does one low res for just mm-hmm. thumbnails. Yeah. He does one medium res for web. 
yeah like a website and instagram that kind of thing and then he does one high res which basically could be blown up to the size of a billboard or or more yeah um now i was quite wary of kind of i don't know i went for the medium ones because i thought do i really want to give them pretty much an image they can blow up to the size of a billboard i don't know i I was a bit uncomfortable about about that because my photographer he the photographer i work with he specializes in photographing art that's what he does and he works for he's a he does a lot for the journalism industry as well and uh, magazines and things and he did say to me he said when he sends me the images he always says this one is for use on the web this one is low res for thumbnails. This one, do not hand this over to anybody, and you know, because this is, this is the one we would use for if you want to blow it up big time, yeah. and you you yeah. wouldn't want to limit anyone, you know, access to that image. Yeah. So, what would your advice be? Would you think I've done it right, where I've I've done the medium kind of one? Well, there doesn't seem to be any definitive advice on this online. It doesn't, does there? No. no. And we've looked and we've even asked people what size it should be. And there seems to be no right answer. Different websites have uh, limits as to what size file you can upload. So I think OpenSea, which is the marketplace we've been using, is 100 megabytes. Yeah. But then there's other marketplace I noticed the other day, and they said 10 megabytes. Right. So, Surely it's yeah. just, just about what looks okay on a computer screen, doesn't really, it? Really, yeah. Yeah. Because that is, it, yeah. Go on. That is probably correct. I've been... I've been doing fairly high resolution ones of mine because I don't mind if someone if someone wants to print one out for their own use, you know, something to put on their wall. Yeah, I'm completely fine with that. Yeah, if they if they you know paid for the NFT. Um, so I've been uploading mine at reasonably high resolution. Uh, but again, I think that's all down to personal choice. I don't think there is a definitive. No, definitive I mean these are still very. I mean they're high quality images. It's just the fact they're not as large if you yeah, like. you couldn't blow them up as huge without losing quality could you that, exactly yeah but for the purpose of what an nft is or certainly for for printing it out as a as a kind of average sort of size you'd put on a wall they'd be yeah fine not, i think that's perfect i think that's all you need yeah yeah anyway but we can't sorry. we can't say definitive sizes because it doesn't no. seem to be a and that's uh, the thing about it isn't yeah. there there's a limit of the information and it's, it's hard yeah. that's what well, it's, that's what i found hard about starting out so i don't i think because think... I mean, because you wouldn't want to take a quick snapshot on a, on your Polaroid, would you? No, <laughs> and then you no. That, you know, you would no. You want, a, you want a good quality, either yeah. photo or a scan, yeah. So that you've cleaned up, a, you know, a bit. Mm. But uh, yeah, I there's 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 no proper answer. I don't no. think for that, unless some maybe some can forward. If you do know, I'd love yeah. to hear because yeah, we don't know. No. Um, but anyway, what I like about NFTs is it's another avenue to sell your art. So. If, if say, for example, you make physical art like you and I do, yeah, um, as well as being able to sell your original piece, you can also sell prints of it and you can now also sell an NFT. So it's just one more avenue and a way to sell your art. And the good thing about it is there's no gatekeepers as, as such, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I suppose there isn't so much now. You haven't got to go through a gallery to do it or anything. You can just put it up there. And basically, it's a case of you promoting it, isn't it, to sell it. Exactly. But it just, it just gives us another possible revenue stream. Yeah. Um, another thing that I love about NFTs, and I haven't been fortunate to make use of this bit yet, <laughs> is you can build a royalty into your NFT. So I've built royalties into mine so that I think I've put 5% on a lot of mine. Yeah. So that, so that if someone buys one of my NF- NFTs and then in the future it increases in value and they decide to sell it, I will get 5% of whatever they sell it for. And that will keep on going and going however many times it gets resold on. Yeah, but the second time it gets resold on, isn't it less percentage? You, you can no. choose, can't you? But no. Oh, okay, right. It's it's the same. You keep getting whatever percentage you set, and I think it's up to ten percent you can put. Right. You you keep getting that percentage. Mm. I've no idea what happens if it's sold for less, as in if the value decreases. Because mm. I noticed on some sites, I believe on OpenSea you still get the percentage. I have seen on some sites where they they say you only get the royalty on the increase. If you know what I mean. Yeah. 
paper. But for, for, for what I understand, that who who we were using, which is so open sea, you get that percentage on the resale. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say you don't have to you don't have to sell the original painting with the NFT, but there is an option to do that if you want to. Okay, so so how then do you put an NFT up for sale? Obviously, I know this now, but for a purpose of our listeners, what, yeah, what well, do you do? Well, first of all, you need a good quality digital file. So like you said, that could be a photograph. Now, you could do it yourself if you've got some decent lighting and a, a decent camera or your your phone's really good quality, or you can scan it as well. Um, and obviously, if you create digitally, you're fine anyway because that's already made. And you just save it as a JPEG. That's that, it. That simple. That simple. Mm, yeah. Crazy. Obviously, you might want to tweak with colors and stuff, you know, depending yeah. what you think. But yeah. Well, I think uh, that's as well as when you do, when you sell an original i suppose the difference about this is that when i put my originals up for sale on my website i do everything i can to make sure that the color match is as close as possible i know it varies from screen to screen but as close to as possible as what is you know the physical thing that's what i do um because i don't want to send it to someone and somebody says oh my gosh it looks so much more bright and colorful on the, on the computer i want them to to see it as close to you know they can as yeah. what's there. even if it means i have to make it look slightly worse in the image yeah. <laughs> but the thing with an nft is it's different isn't it you can actually if you want to you can tweak it in any way you like because what you're doing is you're making it it work as a digital piece you're not thinking about the original and you you can tweak it as much as you want to make it how you want it as the digital, pi- digital piece because it's kind of a separate entity really isn't it yeah and some people actually work so i've heard of a lot of people who work so they'll start off working by hand mm. and then they'll work into it digitally yeah so that piece doesn't exist as an original even but yeah. yeah, you can definitely tweak it. And like we said, um, you know, I've done animations of some of mine where I had one where I'd done a physical piece and then I'd also recorded myself making it. And then I also animated the face moving. Right. So I ha- I think, I don't know if you saw this one, but basically I did, so yeah. It's, yeah, it starts off with the face moving and then it blends in to me making it and it goes backwards. So I'm unmaking it. Which, so you can do some really fun things that you wouldn't be able to do if you were just selling a physical painting. That said, you, because you you obviously spent years, didn't you, as a uh, graphic designer. So I suppose you have got knowledge of how to do things like that more than perhaps the average person would. Yeah, you don't have to do that at all. No, but, but it, it's but, good to learn, but it's, you know... It's it, not necessary. You can just take a photo of your yeah. art and that's it. That's, yeah. that's all you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I never learned animation. Actually, I've ter- taught myself what the little bits yeah. I I learned. That I did. I didn't do that as my job. No. So, but I probably have a. I'm a head start because I know software, exactly. a lot of software and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, all you need to be able to do, and, and like you say, you're now using an app to yeah. animate yours, hmm. and so you don't really need technical ability to do that. And actually, to, to animate the face, I use an app as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think there, most there are, people do, don't you? On on the NFT yeah, world, yeah, I think so, definitely. I mean, sure. there'll be some people who who, who are you know really good animators, but the majority mm. will use an app. Yeah. Um, now we we've only got experience of using one marketplace for selling NFT, so one big shop basically, and which is the use, main one though, isn't it? Really, it is. It's the biggest one I think at the moment, and that's mm. called OpenSea. Um, so that's what we're going to fo- focus on. And if you just think of OpenSea as an Etsy for NFTs. That's how I, I think of yeah. it. Because I can't understand the NFT marketplace. What is an NFT marketplace? Just a shop, isn't it? Yeah. They so that's to it. jazz up the, the yeah. language, don't they? <laughs> yeah. So um, to join OpenSea, you're going to need a, well, if you're going to join, I don't even know if you need, need just, I don't think you can just browse it to look if you want to look what's on there. Yeah. You can do that fine. But if you actually want to put your NFTs on there, you're going to need a digital wallet. Now, this is where the things like, when I first started reading about NFTs and, and was thinking about doing it, I was thinking, oh, I can't do this. It's just too complicated. And I think that's where a lot of artists probably stop, like me, because there's no, it's all done in geek speak. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, isn't it just yeah yeah and even though i'm i i'd say i'm relatively 
techie. I'm not big techie, but reasonably. And even I looked at it and thought, what? (laughs) (laughs) But basically, you need something which is like a digital wallet. And all that is, is something that's going to hold your money online. But when we say money, it's going to be cryptocurrency. And that is where you start thinking, oh, my God. Cryptocurrency. Yeah. This is this is where I my head exploded at this point. I thought oh, I can't do this. I I, can, I can't. I cannot do this. And now I was actually terrified at the start. But we mm. used one called MetaMask, and I think that is one of the big big ones. And that I think this is the most confusing thing for a beginner. But once you get past it, things are quite easy. I would say this is the tricky bit. So. What you want to do is go look on YouTube. There's lots of videos on how to get set up with MetaMask. Um, so you get this MetaMask set up. And if you imagine like you're using your Chrome your Chrome thingy, what do you call it, a browser? Yeah. You know, from Google. So mm. you're using that. And then this little MetaMask, you can get an extension. So it sits at the top of your browser. Yeah. And you basically got to put some money into that. If you're going to use... It depends which way you're going to use OpenSea because there's two ways. There's two different digital currencies. Now, one is called Polygon. Yeah. And one is called ETH or Ethereum. So no doubt someone's going to tell me I've got these terminology wrong. (laughs) But there we go. But Polygon is completely free, so you don't have to put any money in your MetaMask. Yeah. Your, Your digital wallet. Yeah. But if you want to use Ethereum, then you have to pay a charge, initialization charge. Um, and that's what me and you both did, isn't it? Yes. And and the reason we did that is the reason well, we I, did I, I, my thoughts because you I know that you're going to say that yeah. Ethereum, you know, you have to pay a fee, yeah. whereas Polygon is free. So, yeah. So what my initial thoughts were: Why on earth would anyone do it that way? Then why would they use Ethereum if Polygon? was free well you know and that is exactly what i thought as well so when i first tried to sell some nfts i thought i'm going to use polygon yeah apparently it's supposed to be a cleaner way to do things as in it doesn't use much so much energy so polygon is is supposed to be a much cleaner way of doing things Mm. and you don't it doesn't cost anything so the only cost you'd make is if you sell one there's any commission which you would expect anyway yeah so i thought oh i'm gonna use that and then also if someone buys it they don't pay a transaction fee either whereas using ethereum the buyer actually pays a fee to buy your thing so i thought i'm gonna use that anyway it was crickets i heard nothing got nothing and i thought do you know what I'm just going to bite the bullet. Everyone seems to be using this Ethereum, this ETH. I was going to say that. I've not seen it. I've probably seen one or two people using Polygon, but most people seem to be using Ethereum, don't they? Yeah. So I thought, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to try this Ethereum. So so I did it. Uh, and basically, for your digital wallet, this MetaMask, you have to use your credit card to buy some digital currency. I think I started off and I can't remember how much, how much I bought, but maybe 150 Two hundred dollars. You don't yeah. necessarily need that much, though. But that's how much I put in there. Yeah. And then I thought, right, that's it. I'm going to initialize it. And when I initialized, it cost hundred dollars. But you can get it way cheaper. It the the amount it costs depends on how busy the network is. Right. Which sounds crazy, doesn't it? Mm. But so you could go on there one day, and it might cost you thirty dollars to initialize your account and get started. Another day, it might cost you a hundred. Another day, it could cost you two hundred. And then to Initialize OpenSea, basically that happens once you put something up for sale. So OpenSea works in two stages, and I don't think I'm getting complicated here. But basically you upload basically you upload a JPEG. You go into this thing and, and you say, create, and I'm going to create this NFT. So you upload your JPEG, fill in all the details like the title and everything like that. And that's one stage. And then it's a, you say, oh, right, now I'm going to sell that thing that I've just put up. So you go to sell, decide how much you want to sell it for. And then it says, oh, you need to initialize your account. And I was wetting myself at this point because I was thinking, I'm scared to do this because is it going to tell me how much it's going to cost me first? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was thinking, am I going to press this button? It says, I've just charged you $500. Do you know what I mean? I was like terrified. Yeah. But don't worry because it does tell you. So you go and you say sell and it says initialize your account and it will pop up. And it will say, it's going to cost you approximately 
hundred dollars or fifty dollars or whatever it is and so you can say yes or you can just come back later if it's really expensive so so I said yes um and it goes through and that's it and once you've done that bit that's the that's a hard bit done isn't it because then yeah. you can load anything you like and it doesn't cost you any more. there's no I, I was very scared of that bit I must admit when when it came to putting money into a digital wallet and suddenly it's not money anymore it's turned into this ethereum which i don't still don't to this day understand what you know how much it it translates to i do because it's there if you know what i mean but it's really i find that really hard to understand but can i just yeah for the purpose of people out there listening to this who are basically like me i just want to summarize what you've said in a in a language that I understand. Yeah. Okay. And this is how I see it. Now I've done it. Okay. So yes, you have to get your digital wallet MetaMask. So that's that's step one. And that's easy because really you just like you say, go on YouTube and it'll tell you how to do that. You put you put some money in there enough to cover the fees. Yeah. Once you've done that, you then open an open C account. Now that is basically the it's like saying you're building your website but it's a nice easy way because it's a it's a template let's put it like that i'd call it a shop i'd say okay yeah Yeah, okay etsy let's say etsy then basically you're you're putting your stuff up on etsy so it's no different really you're putting your price you're putting a description and then once you've put that up there you just press like you would on Etsy, you'd probably press sell or publish or whatever. It's it's basically that. It's put simply, that is what it is. It's just that it, because of all the fancy language that goes with it, it sounds really scary. And the fact that it's a different kind of currency sounds really scary. But actually, when all said and done, it's actually not that difficult. Once you've done it, it's not that difficult. Once you've done it, you've just you've just got to do it once. I mean, I went. I mean, with I had you as my kind of. Uh, well, you were kind of there with me, weren't you? As I was doing it, I was like, right, "Am I doing this?" I, had, right? I was I your doing... rolly eyes tutor. Yes, yeah, she was. She basically tutored me. But then once I'd done it once, then after that, I was doing it on my own. You know, and it was fine. It was just that initial. It's a bit scary at first. But don't yeah. be too scared because if I can do it, literally, <laughs> I'm telling you, anyone can. But um, but that's the kind of that's the kind of technical side of things sort of gone through. Is there anything else you want to add to that before I go well, on? Only the fact that once you've done that and paid that one time, well, it's a double fee it calls it, but basically you're paying once. Yes. So so you pay this hundred dollars, thirty dollars, whatever you manage to get it for. Yeah. Um, that's it. You're not paying any more money. That's it um so once you've done that you then can list any art you like it costs you nothing and the only amount you pay is if you sell one but that just is basically just commission like like on etsy if you sell something they're going to take their yeah i don't know however whatever percentage they take that's that's what happens with OpenSea. so so let's say i bought a nft from you yeah i would buy it on the open sea and that money would drop into your digital wallet yeah as ethereum but then yeah. you can then yeah. you can then convert that con- ethereum back into money yeah and put it into your bank yes yes and, you or, then have, or yeah. you could buy or invest in someone else's nft with part of that money if you wanted yeah. to i mean i always said once i've sold my first few i'll probably buy one just to you know and every time i sell a few i'll buy one sort of thing yeah and it's kind of expected it yeah. sounds weird but that if you sell a few nfts you're kind of expected to buy one <laughs> yeah it's yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's just the done thing in the, in these yeah. things that that you should be if a few people invested you, you should be prepared to invest in someone else. Yeah. I, th- I think is. The but way. there's no point in buying as much as you're selling. Otherwise, you're just not making no, anything, are no, you? No. I mean, you might Definitely in the end not. if they go up in, in value, but you just don't know that, do you? No. But yeah, basically, that's what happens with the money. It goes into this sort of account. But that again, that's just not, no different than online banking, is it? You, you People, it's very easy to think of, oh, it's an online MetaMask digital wallet. Ultimately, it's no different than going to NatWest Bank on your online. It's it's just all numbers. But the, the only thing, 
you're not Sorry, physically only... walking into a bank anymore and, no, and no. handing your money over in a way. Everything's sort of done digitally, isn't it? The only thing I wouldn't do, what I've been doing is that when I get a bit of money in there, I don't want to hold too much money in that no. MetaMask just in case it gets hacked or do you know what I mean? You don't know what can happen. So yeah. when I get a reasonable amount of money in there, I transfer it out to, I've basically now got a crypto bank. So I transfer it out into this crypto bank and then I can put that into my real bank. Okay, so now I'm lost. <laughs> So hang on. So, so let, let's say if so if I made a sale, right? Yeah, yeah. And in plopped my um, money or my cri- my c- cryptocurrency into yeah. my or Ethereum into my yeah. MetaMask account. Yeah. How do I get it out and, and transfer that to cash in my normal bank account? Well, you need to transfer that into a you know a cryptocurrency account. I haven't got one of those. No, but you will do. You can get one. It's, it's easy to get one. I'll just wait, get. though. <laughs> yeah. But basically, there's, there's, I'm using um, a company called Gemini, but there's lots of different ones. Um, well, I am a Gemini, so that would probably suit me. Uh, so basically, you just tell MetaMask to send it to Gemini, like right. you would if you were doing a, a bank transfer. Yeah. So I want to send this amount of money to my this bank right. send it to there and then from that bank you can then transfer it to your bank right so you basically wait till you've got a few hundred quid in there and then you transfer yes it. that's yeah. what i'm doing yeah, yeah. well oh, dollars God. it all works in dollars but yeah. yes so yes I, ho- I hope i'm not making this more confusing than some of the things i'm never gonna do this now <laughs> no uh, the trouble is it does feel i mean i remember feeling that way i do yeah. that's why i'm trying to sort of follow it on with basically yeah. it's that that and that Okay, let's hold it right there. On that note, Tara and I waffled on for another, I don't know, 45 minutes, something like that, about NFTs, because there's a lot to cover. And if you're like me, you can probably only take so much in in one go. So what we decided to do is we decided to make this a two-part episode. So part two will be sort of focusing on how to promote your NFTs, that kind of thing. So, uh, yes, we'll leave it here and we'll see you for part two soon. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Welcome to today's episode, which is all about NFTs. Just giving everyone a moment to switch off because it sounds so boring. <laughs> no, it doesn't. There's nothing wrong with that welcome. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the NFT bit. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's the sort of podcast that I'd listen to and think, uh, yeah, I'll just See, I would, I would listen to, I would binge <coughs> listen to <coughs> podcasts on yeah, NFTs. In fact, I do binge listen to podcasts about NFTs. That's because you're a geek. Well, yes.